اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بدرب لہم مثلا اصحاب القریت از جاہ المرسلون از ارسلنا الیہ مسنین فکذبوہما فعززنا بسالس فقالو انا الیکم مرسلون This is very clear that only one karya, one township is uh, central to this verse. And whatever happened there cannot be shifted to another township without any authority from the Qur'an or common sense. That's one thing is highly important. بدرب لہب 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 And without the additional help of the third person, the message of the two who came first cannot be fully complemented. See, this is the point. Now, with regards to that, when we look at different medieval commentaries of the Qur'an, we know that this, they have noted this point. And yet they fail to identify the two first mentioned and the third who joined them later. They fail to identify them from among the comity of prophets. That is why they have shifted to a situation where three persons in one karya can be shown to have visited. But they are not Allah's prophets. They were not sent by God. So, there too they are absolutely wrong. I can read from three tafasir. Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani as Allama Ulusi. It says, Mursaleen are those representatives of Jesus Christ. Remember. And read the verse again, it's impossible. Arshallah, <laughs> Allah says, we sent them. And they are representatives of Jesus Christ, just no bodies. What are the disciples of Jesus Christ to replace the person mentioned in this verse? It says, Jesus Christ sent them to the place is not mentioned. In one other uh, verse it is mentioned as Antakya. Imagine this verse to be degraded to the position of Antakya as being that great township. But anyway, the Sira Rulmani says the two are Yohanna and Paulus. Paulus who destroyed the religion of Christianity, who created Trinity. It's a shame that these Mufassirin are so much misapplying the verses of the Qur'an that it becomes a, an affront, an insult to the Qur'an. To mention Polus, that God says, we sent Polus. And what he brought was brought from Allah. Imagine. And then they say, There are two other names also mentioned, Narus and Marus. <laughs> Who are these? Narus and Marus. 
and Salis is Shamoon. This is what they have done to the Quran and the Quranic Tafasi and the medievalists follow them, you know, with shut eyes. You don't see what they're doing, what are they believing in? Al-Kashaf is a much better and more authentic book of Hadith in the sense that Allama Zamashkhari was a very rational man. And I deeply respect him for his rationality. But he also, in search of the prophets, has gone to Antakya. Poor man. He can't find any other prophet closer than that. So he says, it were two representatives of Jesus Christ who were sent to Antakya. And the third was Shamun. He also follows that. Now, Durman, can you accept this, Tafsir? Everything is not, no sensible person can. Allama Fakhruddin Razi has this quality about him that instead of attributing to himself these such tafasi, he doesn't find any reasonable explanation. He says, it is said that, it is said that. That is the typical style of Alama Fakhul Ghazi, which I like so much, that he does not unnecessarily attribute these false things to himself, but instead of leaving a vacuum, he says, some others have described this. So he said, Kariya is Antakya, and it is understood by some that it were two representatives of Jesus Christ who were sent there to deliver the message of Jesus. Yet at the same time, Allah Marazi refuses to explain who the third one was and himself does not offer any explanation of this verse. Which means he just could not understand. And there, has, there is more to it than this the eye. Understand? Now, this much about the tafasis. Unfortunately, and that is where I deeply regret that in our single one volume commentary and five volume commentaries, similar things but differently wrong. Not Antakya thing, but other things which are again wrong, they have been, they have found their place in these tafasir. And the first we find them mentioned is from year 1910. They failed to quote Muhammad Muslimah in this regard. And that is a very significant point. What they say is, now I'll tell you what they say. What they say is <coughs> that the first two are Moses and Aaron. And the third one, I'll read that. کریا کوئی مقام یا جگہ تمثیلی طور پر ساری دنیا اس صورت میں اصحاب القریہ سے مراد بنی نو انسان that is one extended meaning that اصحاب القریہ should be a figure of speech applicable to one township which applies to the whole world Though I referred to this tafsir before, that Mecca has been understood to be that basti, that township to which these people were raised. If it is true, then evidently Ahadrasallahu has to be the third one. Right? 
but here the our tafsir goes on to say Hazrat Musa or Hazrat Isa these two plus Rasulullah sallam or Ibrahim and Ismail these two plus Rasulullah sallam this is what is evidently wrong read the verse again you see you know, it's, it's just kind of apply فَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَسَلًا نَصَابَ الْقَرِيَةِ اِذْ جَاهَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ اِذْ اَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهُمْ اُسْنَيْنِ وَكَذَّبُوهُمَا فَعَزَّزْنَا بِسَالِسٍ فَقَالُوا اِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُرْسَلُونَ Who is reading this? Tamseel. Hazrat Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَسَلًا نَصَابَ الْقَرِيَةِ اِذْ جَاهَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ That means it happened all before him. The third also had come before him. So how could he read this Tamsil, including himself? <laughs> you understand the point? Very clearly, it's a contradiction in terms. This verse tells our Hazrat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read the example of a people before, of a, of a township before, to which two, Allah sent two prophets of his. And they refused to accept him. Then a third was sent by Allah. It all happened before the time that Rasulullah was reading all this. So how could he be the third? You got the point? So this is what these people omit. Only in their over-enthusiasm to include Ahadur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this verse, which verse is a package from the past. And that package is going to serve the purpose of some similarities which may happen at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's all the usefulness. Many times a past incident is mentioned in the Quran only to indicate that similar things may happen again. And you should be well warned that these things are not merely matter of the past, they can happen again. And they may happen again. So there is a prophecy in what has been said with reference to some township. Not direct prophecy. But why should Rasulullah read this to the people? It means it must give them a message. A message that if that can happen before, it can happen now in that time, in the age of Muhammad Rasulullah. Got it now? Clear? Against this there is no logical objection. Yet, to identify the people is the main problem. That is why I took the position last time, which is a bit odd in itself, but still the soundest of all the positions which have been taken before that Al-Qariya must be Egypt, where Moses and uh, Aaron were sent, and they were denied. They were supported by a prominent figure of the royal house who told them that they are right. So Azazna here does not mean that his support and his evidence in favor of them was because he was more honorable. Because the two were honorable in the sight of Allah, so for their sake a third person was raised who was not a prophet. So that is why the first two are mentioned as a separate category of prophets. 
the third is not mentioned as a prophet. You understand the point? The verse, read again, then I'll explain further. Badrib lahum masalan nasab al kariyate is jah al mursalun is arsalna ilahum usnane fakazabu huma fazazna bethalisin fakalu inna ilahum mursalun. Which means that they are the two main prophets who serve the purpose of delivering the message of Allah to these people. They were mainly intended. When they were rejected, then Allah honored them by sending their supporter who stood witness that we are right. Not we prophets, but all three together are right in the message. And the message has to be the same. It was, a, it was no new prophet which was raised. It was a supporter of the previous two in their message. Now, interestingly enough, in Tafsir e Saveer, I read the same argument, although not developed in the same sense. But Hazrat Muslim Maud had hit upon this, the second head of the Hindu community. He says, Is ayat mein kaha gaya, humne do rasool pehle bheje. The verse says, we sent two prophets before. Phir unko taqwiyat dene ke liye tisra bheja. Then to support them and augment them, we sent the third one. Now here, Hazrat Muslim Muslim Aud includes them in the list of prophets. The third one, which I do not. Because when you include them in the list of, the third in the list of prophets, then the history slips by and we can't pinpoint anybody. So my argument is that they were the two real prophets of Allah. The third was sent as, as such arsalna applies to him. Not as a prophet, but as, as a strong witness. Now, our, the argument remains the same. Muslim of the argument, he says, Tisa Rasul bhi wohi baatein karta tha jo pehle karte the, varna agar nahi baatein karta, to unko isse kya takwiyat hoti? Isse ayat se sabit hota hai ke bagayar shiriyat ke bhi nabi hota hai. This means that to support their cause, that third person must have said exactly what they had said. Which proves that a, a prophet can be born without a sharia who supports the sharia of the previous prophets. This argument is sound. But to call him a prophet himself confuses the issue. You must understand this point because you have to explain to everybody. The last point is that Hazrat Muslim Maud's argument as a logical argument is a very strong argument. He says God must have sent the third person without another Sharia. Because he, if he had deviated from the Sharia of these two, then he could not have supported them. So he must have said exactly the same things which they had said. That is support. So if you remove from this writing the word Rasul in the uh, in the sense of the definition of Rasul, then the whole explanation falls in full agreement with what I am suggesting. Now you got it? <coughs> now I am Finding an example from the Holy Quran where Al Mursaloon, the word Al Mursaloon is applied not to the technically 
not to the prophets of Allah as they are defined, but to angels in general, who were sent with a purpose. And they were not prophets of Allah as we understand them, who were raised to mankind. Our prophets are raised from amongst ourselves. So Al Mursaloon may just mean those who are sent by Allah. Two, the first two, are mentioned as prophets, and they are prophets. So this whole description applies to the description of Hazrat Musa and Harun when their people were deciding amongst themselves their fate. They were about to issue the verdict that they should be murdered. They rejected them as two prophets. Then came a person hurrying forth, hastening towards the people, who was a man who was a from among the people of Pharaoh, among, from among the royal house of Pharaoh, who had the authority to walk into them and address them directly, and they had to listen to him. So that is the third person who was sent at that critical moment, I believe, when the elders of Pharaoh were about to and judge them as worthy of being murdered, as having, as being condemned to murder, having forfeited their lives. He walks in and he addresses them. In in yako kadiban fa alayhi kazibu, that is what the verse is. Hmm? Dusri kanam dusri. When yako kadiban fa alayhi kazibu, قال رجل المؤمن من آل فرعون يكتم إيمانه أتقتلون رجلا أن يقول ربي الله وقد جاءكم بالبينات من ربكم. Despite hiding his faith, he says that much. <laughs> you see, what is there left of his faith to be hidden? أن يقول ربي الله وقد جاءكم بالبينات من ربكم. وإن يكو كذبا فعله كذبه. When you go sadiqan, you sip kum badu ladi yaidukum. Inna Allah la yahdi man huwa mustafun kazaab. I personally believe and still prefer there may be some lakunas in this tafsir. Allah knows best. But of all the interpretations, I think this befits best. Muslims. The two, now, the two examples from the Holy Quran which I want to quote to indicate Sometimes Mursaloon does not always apply to the prophets of Allah as we know them. But someone who was sent. Falamma ja ala lutinil Mursaloon. See? And the second is, Kala fama khadduhum ayyuhal Mursaloon. That is Ibrahim, addressing the prophets or the messengers of Allah sent to him. فَمَا خَطُّكُمْ أَيُّهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ So the word Mursal there does not mean a prophet in the strict technical term. The thing to be noted about him is that he did not bring new law. He had to be subordinated to them. One thing is very important. Now, if this is applied as a metaphor, and Ahmad is told by the Holy Quran to refer to that incident, so that they may think this may, in a different metaphorical form, take place again. If this is possible, and I believe it is possible, because the incident itself has been described, it actually happened in history, and there's nothing wrong about that. 
So metaphorically, if it applies to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then all the three should not have come at one time. But they could be referred, with reference to this incident, to have, uh, to have been related to Umul Qura. And that is how I extend it. My interpretation in this sense, if it is a warning for the rest of the people, it has to be a warning, I believe, because the Jerusalem was not told unnecessarily to quote this example to them. Then the first prophet has to be Abraham, who was raised to be to this Qariya, which is the Umul Qura. And the second prophet has to be Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu He is again raised in this Qariya, which is Umul Qura. And the third prophet has to be a non-law-bearing person who supports them. And thus universalizes the faith of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu and Abraham and al Qariya Makkah is a symbol of that universality. In that sense, I believe that the first one was Abraham wasalam. Gradually he was rejected, of course. Because at the time of Muhammad there were so many idols worshipped in the place where he, which he had rebuilt for the worship of one God alone. Then Ahlul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed the same people of the whole world from Umul Qura and at last he was also rejected in the sense that all his efforts of unity of Allah were brought to a knot and his own, his own people as well as the rest of the world began to idolize things and people and the unity of God was broken. This is specifically mentioned in the Holy Quran. The Surah Salam is mentioned as complaining to Allah that these people, look at these people, they have taken the, broken the Quran into pieces. This means the unity is destroyed. Some verses are quoted by some, some verses are quoted by others. In that situation, the third has to be a non-law-bearing prophet who supports both Abraham and Hazrat Muhammad and says, well, why, why don't you believe in the realities of these two prophets? And that is further supported, this argument by me is further supported by the Holy Quran, when it says, Riyatlu ho shahidu minna. But time is foregone. Eh? In the next meeting, inshallah, you first finish this, and in the meantime, I'll try to come and take up the matter from here. Okay. Tell them we'll begin. We'll begin to translate in the next session, inshallah. Next week, inshallah. Okay. <laughs>